Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar. I'm going to jump right in with a quick overview of Meyerson. Then we'll learn a, a bit about Trusana. The Meyerson company has been in business for over 100 years and is a globally recognized dental manufacturing company. Our headquarters are located in Chicago, and our factory is in the Caribbean country of Trinidad and Tobago, where we've been manufacturing for over 70 years. While we specialize in the removable prosthetics market, we are dedicated to the research and development of innovative products. Our most popular products are Meyerson and Kenson denture teeth, Duraflex and VisiClear for removable partial frameworks, as well as EMA for the treatment of snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. Trusana is a premium resin used to 3D print denture teeth for complete dentures, over dentures, or interim fixed complete dentures. It currently comes in six shades with more in development. Trusana is, val is validated for use on SprintRay and Asiga printers, and we have additional printer validations underway. For today's presentation, Tony and I will be focusing on using Trusana for all on X cases during the provisional phase of treatment. The first thing I wanna go over today is why Trusana is different and better than other materials you've experienced so far with 3D printing in our industry. So why is it so special? Trusana is an unfilled polymer with lifelike aesthetics and super strong covalent bonds. What does this mean? A covalent bond is a chemical bond that involves the sharing of electrons to form electron pairs between atoms. These electron pairs are known as sharing bonds or bonding pairs, and the stable balance of attractive and repulsive forces between atoms when they share those electrons is known as covalent bonding. This balanced sharing of electrons between the bonded atoms results in the strongest bond known in nature. Other resins use fillers to try to achieve this. Particles like nanoceramic, for example, are added to some resins for strength and shade. That's why you have to roll some of these resins for up to 12 hours before you can use them. If you don't do this, any aesthetic or strength characteristics it had are dramatically reduced. So remember, Trisana doesn't use particles for shade, it's unfilled. It uses pigments that are easily incorporated into the resin mixture. Another thing to keep in mind is that resin doesn't seal perfectly to and around these particles. There will be gaps around them, and this leads to problems like micro cracks and chips down the road. Nothing has been proven yet, but there are some concerns that with these other resins, as the patient wears down the appliance, they are being exposed to these nanoparticles. That's something you'll never have to worry about with Trusana. Also, its unique chemistry, those covalent bonds, gives it shape memory. If you were to flex it, it would return right back to its original shape, which is why it's so perfect for the All on X device. It boils down to this. Our team of polymer chemists have developed an unfilled, super strong polymer that's also extremely aesthetic and lifelike. Another advantage of Trusana is low absorption of moisture. A lot of the materials you've been using tend to absorb a great deal of moisture because these other 3D printed resins contain acrylates in their chemistry, which are hydrophilic, meaning they attract moisture. They will absorb a lot of moisture in the oral, oral environment. You can see here that some of the materials that we've tested show up to 2% absorption of moisture. And as you probably know, with moisture comes staining, bacteria, and odor. Trusana is extremely hydrophobic, meaning it repels moisture, showing a moisture absorption rate of 0.3%. With the devices we're printing, which live in the mouth, we're dealing with a moisture-rich environment. So the materials we use need to be hydrophobic and repel moisture like Trusana. Denture teeth, which we've been using for many, many years, absorb 0.4% moisture. Now, as an industry, what we want from 3D printing is for the material to be at least as good as what we've been using for the last 50 or 60 years. But it would be great if it was even better, right? 
And you can see here, the moisture absorption of Trusana is better than what we've always used, while the current generation of 3D printed resins are worse. Trusana has a really nice toughness. In this study, we see Trusana did three times better than PMMA after 14 days in water and actually measured 34 megapascals. We had an independent university do wear testing and they found Trusana to be about twice as resistant to wear as the leading premium denture tooth from a carded denture tooth manufacturer. So this testing showed Trusana to be as good, if not better than what we've been using. And that's what all we're asking for with 3D printing. We've had the advantage of digitally designing, which works great. We've had the advantage of being able to train our employees faster to digitally set teeth that faster than you can teach someone to set teeth by hand with wax and carded teeth. But the materials we've had access to for manufacturing these devices digitally have been inadequate. Now that we have Trusana, we do have a great material that is as good, if not better, than what we've had in the past. And in this instance, twice as good. We showed you that Trusana is three times stronger than the leading high impact 3D resin and actually excels with its wear characteristics and its toughness in water, where other materials you've been using actually tend to lose some of these properties. So a lot of the stats you'll see with other materials are measured when the material is dry. Once those materials spend some time in the high moisture environment of the mouth, the results tend to drop. So do your research and don't be fooled. We have been working with several universities who are using Trusana for their all on X cases for the provisional phase of treatment. They are then observing the prosthesis looking for any chipping, breaking or failure of the material. We're very excited and optimistic with the results so far. Trusana was actually developed for these types of cases because there is such an epidemic of failures using, using traditional PMMA. Trusana is, is strong and shock absorbing, which is going to be better for the healing implants and the opposing dentition. And as we've seen in the previous slide, over time, the prosthesis won't collect stains, bacteria, and odor, which give the patient perpetual bad breath. And the wear characteristics are great, because if the device is in the patient's mouth for an extended period of time during healing, the doctor has spent a lot of time establishing the vertical. With Trusana, the patient won't destroy that and you can move on very nicely to the definitive prosthesis. So in university study, the university studies are really important. We have these cases out there and the patient transitions to the final and they've worked out really beautifully. I've been where you guys are sitting. You hear these presentations and all of these stats and studies and they promise you the world, but until they get these things in the mouth, that's where the true test is, where the true measure of the material is. And we're seeing really good results with Trusana and all of the independent university studies show that our lab tests are proving to be true in the mouth as well. So we're really excited to be working with these universities and establishing a really nice result with the material. The developers of Trusana aren't chemists in some facility inventing a material that should work in the dental industry. These people are in de dentistry and they have developed this unique material. So not only do we have the brilliance of their minds as far as chemistry is concerned, we have the real life application of this material, knowing what is needed in the patient's mouth for the prosthesis to survive. Dr. Jess Stansbury is the initial developer of the technology and Dr. Steven Sadowski, who was also involved with the development and is now focused on those university studies using Trusana for all on cases in the mouth. We're very lucky to have their minds focused on this material. We also have a great support structure because we want you to know that when you get your bottle of Trusana dropped off at your lab, don't think that you're cut loose. It's not like we've made the sale and now you have this resin that you have to make work. At Meyerson, the products we've been supplying for labs for 100 years and up to now, we always support our customers. It does us no good to send a bottle to a lab 
and they have difficulty and they never buy again. When our customers do well, we do well, and it's good for everyone. So we have an infrastructure in place to be able to answer any questions you might have and help you if you have any issues with the material. So that's a little bit about the material and how it's different from the materials you might be using now. Next, I want to talk about what it takes to produce something using Trusana. I'll give you an overview of the process and also what may be different from the resins you've used in the past. We'll talk about the importance of mixing the resin, the printing, cleaning, curing, and the finishing of Trusana. For our purposes today, we'll focus on the printing steps using Trusana on an Asiga Max UV. But first, let's talk about mixing. Yes, Trusana needs to be mixed, but as I mentioned earlier, you won't need to keep Trusana on a bottle roller for 12 hours. All of the desirable characteristics of the chemistry are of the material itself. Before the pigment is added, this material is crystal clear. There are no external nanoparticles added to it, and so the only reason you need to mix it is because of the pigments. They need to be dispersed throughout the resin. The accuracy of the shade is dependent upon proper mixing protocols. If you've used the resin regularly or it's a popular shade or it's still in the resin tray, you'll just wanna mix it using a rubber spatula to redistribute the pigment. Sometimes you'll see a swirl. Make sure you get that mixed in. That's just some of the pigments that have settled. If it's been in the bottle and you have time, Put it on a roller like this one or something similar. I've even used an orbital shaker. Um, let it mix for an hour or so. If it's a brand new bottle or it's been on your shelf for a while, you'll want to shake it vigorously in your hands. Now, because this might trap air bubbles in the resin, you'll want to put it on the roller or mixer to eliminate those air bubbles before you print. When printing, you'll need to have the Trusana settings uploaded to ensure you're using the validated workflow. These settings will ensure consistent, accurate results and include the best types of supports. You can get these files directly from the printer manufacturer's website, in this case, ASIGA. After printing, cleaning the printed parts with 99% isopropyl alcohol is a very important step. Like many other resins, you'll use a two-step approach to cleaning the printed part, a dirty bath and a clean bath. Two minutes in the dirty bath, then one minute in the clean bath. You'll also need to agitate the baths during cleaning with an orbital shaker or some other similar method, then dry the part off with compressed air. It's important to be strict about the timing in the alcohol baths. If Trusana is left too long in the alcohol, we have seen a bit of a drop in the strength properties. Once cleaned, you'll put the part, printed part in the Asiga flash unit for final curing, 12 minutes on each side. The part is only 70 to 80% cured when it comes out of the printer, so you'll need to finish that curing process. I know we've all been hearing a lot about validated printers. But actually, in order to validate a resin on a printer, the entire process needs to be validated, including the curing unit. Some people may want to use a different curing unit, but doing so is risky, not only for the success of the part, which includes the strength, properties, and aesthetics, but also for the safety of the patient. Uncured resin is nothing to play around with, especially if it's a part that's going in the mouth. It's important to stick to the instructions for use or the IFUs to get the best and safest results. Once final curing is done, we have the water bath. So this material is unique in that the final step of the process is 10 minutes in a hot water bath set at 80 degrees Celsius. This pro process actually relaxes the molecules of the resin. And with that, you gain about five to 10% of your strength from this annealing process. It's very important that you're not guessing at the temperature or the time. So get a scientific water bath, and you can even use a thermometer to confirm the calibration of the water unit. If the water is too hot, it can affect the shade, making it darker, essentially cooking it. 
So sticking to the time and temperature is very important. You'll put the water in a Ziploc bag and submerge the bag in the water, and that's basically it. You can contour, characterize with composite like radia or optiglaze, and you're done. And so with that, I will hand it off to Tony. Excellent. There you are, Tony. All right, good. Well, thank you, Susan. Um, thanks for that great amount of information and a little bit of the science. Uh, behind the material. It, it, it always helps when you're working with these materials to have a little bit of background. You know, we're, we're not scientists, we're technicians, uh, but it helps to have that information um, to understand how it all works together. Um, I also like to thank uh, the people from Zion real quick, um, in case we run out of time later on, uh, for putting this education event together. Um, it's, it's a special time when you know, we as technicians uh, can take the time to set aside during the middle of the day. I know it's a difficult thing to do. I've been in, in this business for a really long time, um, 45 years to be exact. So I understand the sacrifices that we all make when, when trying to make time for ourselves, whether it be personal or education. Um, so I appreciate the attendees and I, I appreciate the sign and the people at Henry Shine putting this all together and uh, asking me to be a part of it. Thank you so much, Tony. Would you mind putting your uh, presentation into presenter mode, please? Just, Tony, just hit, there we go. All right, we good? Sorry about that. All right, so, um, as, as Fran introduced me, um, I am the uh, partner in the dental lab. And the dental lab, just real brief, is a um, collection of dental labs that my um, partner and the president and CEO, Jay Collins, has put together over the years uh, by acquiring um, some labs in the area, um, Broadway Dental being one of them. Um, I'm the old guy there. and. Uh, for some reason, I decided to partner up with a 38-year-old that's got a lot more energy than myself um, and much more aggressive, but the odd couple situation seems to be working for us and uh, we're, we're, we're having a good time. So we are a full service lab. Um, this is just real quick to some of the things that we, we do here, you know, everything from porcelain veneers uh, to surgical guides, full mouth reconstructions, single crown zirconia, just about anything that you can imagine, um, you know, and, and, and a full line of removables as well is going through your lab. So the, the, the purpose of our gathering here today, as Susan briefly mentioned, is, is to focus on the incorporation of the 3D print resin Trusana with the desk implant components for the fabrication of long-term all on X implant temporary restorations. Um, as Susan explained, Trusana is an unfilled polymer resin with optimal translucency. It also possesses exceptional flexural strength, especially in the presence of water, which makes it an ideal choice for long-term use. Anyone who's working with implants today surely recognizes the name DES. DES has been manufacturing pre precision components for the medical and dental field for over 50 years. As a global leader in restorative dentistry, they share the passion to achieve the best restorative outcomes as we do. They offer a very comprehensive range of products and solutions for both conventional and digital workflows, including guided surgery, intraoral scanning, and CAD CAM restorations. As Susan touched on the company Meyerson, um, yes, they've been manufacturing in this business for a very long time. Um, very innovative products like Trusana, and, and Susan showed you all the others and talked about them, Dorsetal, Visiclear, Doraflex, and Kenson Denture Teeth. So when, when we decide to choose a product to work with in here in the lab, um, you know, we like to do our research, obviously, and it's important for us 
to, to choose a, a company, or not, not only material, but the company behind that material um, that spends a lot of time in the research and in development and innovation of, of different products. And I would have to say that Meyerson truly uh, checks off all those boxes. Um, they're a well-trusted company with a long track record. Um, the material is, has been extensively researched and tested and it's a multifaceted material, um, meaning that you know not only can we produce digital dentures with it, but we can use it uh, for for temporary restorations, as you see here uh, with this PMMA. Um, th this this particular case, and yes, if you can read that Bowie gauge, that incisal edge to implant interface is over 30 millimeters long. There isn't a, a milling machine or material out there that we'd be able to do this on. But we were able to print that restoration. It's very extreme and things like this don't come into the lab every day, but on occasion, you, you know, you get that extreme case and you, it can be handled with a material like Trusana. Um, as, as Susan also mentioned, it's, it's um, two times the flexural strength of PMMA. It has a great wear resistance and it is three times stronger when wet. So again, through when, when choosing material, these, these are things that we really look at and and say, hey, wouldn't wouldn't you want that in your mouth if you know you you had you had to have something like this in you know placed at some point? And and the answer is yes, you know, I, I would like the best material possible. Um, and you know, obviously there's other things that factor into your decisions. Um, but let's let's try to put the best material out there um, to keep our patients happy. Like many others out there, our first experience with Trusana was using it for digital dentures. Um, we, we printed denture teeth and, and glued it into um, you know the, 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 the either printed or milled denture bases. Uh, it was a it's a nice nice solution. You know, the teeth themselves, again, are very strong, um, much stronger than, say, a conventional denture, where all the teeth are individual. And when they're printed in blocks like this, uh, it's a much stronger connection uh, to the base and much stronger denture overall for the patient. I'm going to just back up for one second. So, all these checklists again. Again, when you're when you're looking to choose a material, you know you, you're you you think about what what are my expectations with this? How are we going to use it? Um, it? Does it fit our needs? Or you know what are we what are we looking to do with it? Um, is it an efficient process? You know it it, it doesn't make sense to choose a material uh, that is going to cost you twice as much. It's you're going to have to get all the special equipment in order to produce it. Um, it just doesn't make sense. So Trusana is, is you know, follows along with our conventional processes of, of digital, digital printing. Um, How does it interact with the rest of the materials and, and the workflow in the lab? Um, you know, you're not looking to have something that will disrupt your whole process. Um, and again, and at the very end, is it performing the way you like it to perform? And I think, uh, again, Trusana checks all the boxes here and uh, it's, it's been great for us so far. Like many products that you start using as a, as a new introduction into your lab, um, there's a learning curve with it. Um, you know, when, when we started milling zirconia years ago, yes, there's a learning curve. You know, you, do, you have to play with the settings a little bit in order to get to the results that you're looking for, for the fit, um, for complete mills. Um, and as the slide on the right will show you some, this is some of the things that we experienced in the early days. Um, you know, it's just a slightly incomplete uh, print on, on, the, on the interface connection. So as, as you can see there, if you look at the little bumps that are present, at the time we were screwing on the intaglio surface. And, this was one of the things we had experimented with, um, and we've we've since changed that. So we're, we're screwing now on the occlusal surface. Um, yes, it's a little bit more difficult to clean up, but 
it solved the issue of incomplete prints um, and, and the screws weren't anywhere near the interface. Uh, so there wasn't any inter interference and the fits have been really, really good since that time. So this is where we are today. You know, we quickly saw a, a, a need or not, not necessarily a need, but a, a, a use for this material in addition to dentures, for digital dentures. Um, this is our case. This is what we're going to be showing. And as a little, you know, preview, very, I'd love everybody to tune in next week. We're going to um, take this case from start to finish. Um, and we're going to show all the, all the techniques from the scan process all the way through to characterizing it uh, with the, um, the GC scribe material and the, um, the optical SK. Uh, so we have it all in four restoration, an extreme, another extreme case, the implant placement, you know, is, is something that was not in our control. The patient has had a lot of bone loss and a lot of ridge reabsorption. So you can see the implants are placed where the bone is, that's, that's what they always tell us. Um, and the, the teeth needed to be to be built out quite a bit facially in order to, to get it into a normal occlusal relationship with the lower arch. So again, very interesting case, very extreme case, but again, uh, this is a great situation for a material as strong as, as Trusana, um, it can withstand uh, the forces that, that cantilevering effect on those implants will propose. Um, okay, so like Susan mentioned, we are printing on the Aceda Max printer. Um, we started at the very beginning with the uh, with the Pro, the Aceda Pro, and um, yes, we had we had some difficulties with it. It was probably um, not the right printer to be using. Short, we quickly changed to the Aceda to, to the Max, and we've had great results since that time. And that's our case up in, a, in the upper corner there in the design stage. Um, and it's like I said, it's you can you can get a good view of the, the amount of overjet and, and buckle cantilever that's there on, the, on that bridge. Those of you that have been printing or manufacturing temporaries, there's always been the challenge of what you know what is an economical way, and it was it even worthwhile making temporaries for your for your clients. You know, it just seemed that it was so labor intensive, and like I said, I've been around for a long time, so my experience goes back to when we used to white wax and invest and pack acrylic, process acrylic, you know, much like a denture is processed. Um, and you, you just could never charge enough money to make that worthwhile. You, you know, you kind of did it as a service to your client. Um, and again, it's just, it was very, very um, labor intensive and, and very expensive process. And you, you were lucky if you broke even with it. Um, so, so then we started milling in PMMA. And you know, PMMA was great. After, after doing white wax and, and packing acrylic, you know, PMMA was, it was a godsend. You know, it, it, again, it's, it's um, maybe not the strongest material right now, but it was much stronger than, than packing acrylic. Um, so it was, a, it was a positive step um, over packing. We believe that the Susana has now taken it to the next level, and really has has made made the process of making it temporary much more predictable, much more cost effective. Get an excellent result with a quality restoration. So, I want to jump to some of the pros and cons of, of Susana. So for me, the pros are things that um, you know Susan has already touched on. Right, we're, we're cost effective. You're not occupying a, a milling machine um, with with printing of this material, 
So that milling machine is now open for more production of zirconia, excuse me, zirconia restorations or, or other types of, of, of bridge work. Um, and it's a faster workflow when, when all is said and done. And then of course the strength factors that come into play and the material itself being less absorbent and other materials, both for moisture and odor. Um, and one point that I, I failed to mention, um, you can follow your conventional digital processes with this. In other words, you can scan your case just like you would scan it for, for any other uh, restoration. You know, we do um, wax setups for our, for our study. Um, so we will scan in the wax setup and do a, um, and, and our, our CAD technicians will use that for our design process. So what we hope that you see here um, with this upper denture setup is um, an exact replica of our, our printed, um, you know, Trusana restoration. And I started thinking about maybe the disadvantages or, 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 or cons to using the material really had a little bit of trouble, uh, you know, coming up with, with some items. Um, but I, I, I have to think of how everybody else will look at it, not just myself, you know, the, the industry in general. So you're going you're gonna to have some people that are going to be upset that it only is available in a limited shade selection. Um, the shades there are listed. You can see the shade guide um, that Meyerson which is, you know, has provided. Um, for us, the, the limited shade selection has not been that much of an issue. Now, you know, consider the fact that yes, this is only a temporary restoration, um, and again, it's for uh, we're using it for full arches, but it's not just a full arch material. Obviously, you can do other other temporaries with it or other restorations with it. Um, but we found that it's it can easily be characterized um, with the OptiBlaze color kit. Um, it can be hand polished as well if, if you choose to do so. Um, but I think glazing it and adding a little bit of color characterization to it with, with minimal time invested. You know, you're, not, you're not looking to uh, obviously spend, spend hours trying to characterize a case. It's just not necessary to do. And within a relatively short period of time, uh, you can you characterize it with the optic glaze and the color get a really, really excellent result. Some might look at the fact that it not being multi-layered is an issue. Yes, you know, most of the PMMAs out there on the market today are multi-layered. Um, but again, I think if you, if you look at the material after it's printed, you can see just a natural translucency to it as it gets, as the material gets thinner, you know, towards the incisor edge. So, it, has that been a problem? Um, no, I don't think so. And, and again, um, you can always take a little bit of blue, gray, or violet out of your rapid glaze kit and, and characterize the inside of the ledge a little bit and get a really, really nice product. Okay, and then the only last thing, again, is, is the, the printer validation. So yes, the Asiga printers are, are currently the ones that are validated for, for the material. Um, like any company, they're always, uh, Meyerson is always constantly researching and developing techniques for additional printers. And they, they I've been assured that they are doing that. So um, if you feel like, well, you know, I, I have to invest in another printer to do this. Um, it, it, the, the pro, or the, I'm sorry, the max, it, it's not a huge investment. I'm sure somebody at, at Zon can help you out with costs there. Um, give you an idea of what, what your investment would be. Um, but if you can get a machine in here like that and kind of dedicated to, um, you know, printing your, your temporaries, it, it'd be a really great um, addition to your, to your lab and your, and your lab services as well. So let's talk a little bit about that implant components and how we are going to integrate them with the um, with the Meyerson material. Uh, this is a worldwide leader in 
manufacturing of restorative components. Um, they've been doing business for over 50 years. Um, their uh, growth has been amazing over the period of years. I really suggest that you, you go to their website, or pick up one of their catalogs, uh, and take a look at their history and take a look at their growth. Um, you know, they started out being headquartered in Barcelona, Spain. Um, they now have divisions uh, pretty much all over the world. And they're really, really a fine producer of uh, implant components in, in our industry. Um, most of their products are FDA approved and in special consideration for the tie bases that we will use um, for, for fabricating our tent. Um, I know there was a, you know, a lot of issues with, with FDA when, when labs started milling their own products years ago and everybody was scrambling around trying to you know, take courses on, on what is FDA approved and 510K and all that stuff. So uh, leave it up to the, ma the major manufacturers to take care of that. Use a product that is already FDA approved and do your own research into that as well. Um, you know, don't take anybody's word for it. You know, again, go, go to their website, research it and, and, and call if you need to, to get some history and some more information about that if you have questions you know, regarding that topic. Um, and let's, the cost effective factor of using a company like this, as opposed to using original um, manufacturers components. Um, quite frankly, I was always a proponent of using, um, you know, original, comp original parts for, for cases. And I still do that when it is asked of us. Um, I do work with, with many different dentists. Some only want original parts and that's fine. We, 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 we give them what they want, but if somebody gives you the option of choosing another product to use, um, why not use you know, desk components? FDA approved, fully interchangeable with original products. Um, just, just a great, great company to work with. Like I mentioned, they have a wide range of products to choose from, and they are compatible with many, many other major implant companies out there today. Um, they offer uh, scan bodies. They offer um, both for scan bodies for both intraoral and lab. Um, full line of analogs, screws abutments, impression copings, just to name a few. Um, they have tools, drivers, instruments that you may need, and also some uh, manufacturer pre-milled blanks. Um, here's some of the, the tie bases. You can see the difference between the dental, the lab, lab scan body and the intraoral scan body. And they also make a scan body that would fit on top of the tie base if you choose to do it that way. You don't, you don't necessarily have to use that particular workshop. Um, and if you just read the uh, little information there, um, the intraoral scan body, Scott scan body, excuse me, is, is unique um, in that it does not have a hole in the top, um, which dramatically improves the precision in, in the Z axis. Okay, no screwdrivers are needed to attach it. Um, so it's, a, again, innovation is all part of this. And, you know, they try to look at companies' products and see how can we make it better? Uh, how can we make the process easier for both the clinician and, and the laboratory? Okay, so here again, just, just some photos of, of the different products that they use on um, analogs. And in, and in most cases, and well, they may not most cases, but in a good bit of the cases, the analogs are color coded to you know the original manufacturer's products, um, so you, you know there's a little less confusion involved. Um, and if you look at their tie bases, there um, you can see that they're uh, they come to you in a sandblasted um, surface, um, and that's a special surface technology that they use. Um, so it increases the bond strength um, by up to 200% as, as they claim. Um, so 
when you get a when you cement that to your restoration, you're going to get a very secure fit. Um, and they offer all kinds of abutments, both temporary abutments, uh, pre pre um, pre pre milled abutments, both straight and angled, um, all, all types of scan bodies and all types of screws. Um, they they hold they, the, the pre milled blanks again are offered in in a, in a lot of different. Uh, Implant platforms, as you can see, um, you know we're not. This isn't really the focus of today's conversation, but I just wanted to mention that um, in case you know it, it stirred any interest from anybody. Okay, so why why we use this, and and just like the reasons um, that we chose Trusana, um, this is a a very innovative company. Um, they, they do a lot of research and development, like I said, and, and, and ways to improve upon our, our different situations. Um, they, are, they are FDA approved. And then one, one unique thing that they do is they offer a lifetime warranty on both the implant that is usually, man, usually provided or manufactured by, uh, by a third party um, or, or one, you know, one of the major manufacturers and a lifetime warranty on their product. Okay, so again, I would suggest that um, you go to their website, read the information about their warranty. It fully explains the situation. Um, they will uh, reimburse you or reimburse the client if that if an implant fails that has a desk abutment on it. Um, but again, all the all the particulars are spelled out on on their website. And uh, yes, I was I would suggest you you take a look at that. The pure switch feature that that Des employs okay, is is a really unique thing. It's, again, it's a, it's a guarantee that a, that their products are 100% compatible with the original implant. Um, so their their abutments will seamlessly um, replace any manu manufacturer's abutments, and there's no compromise of quality or strength when using one of their abutments. Um, and as you can see in the notes there, um, it has the same footprint uh, for the original screwdriver tip. So you're, you're, you know, you're using the same driver that that company, you know, if you happen to be using this on a, a Strauman implant, um, Gonna have that particular company's um, screw uh, configuration. Um, it has the, the identical seat angle, diameter, and length. Again, no compromise on fit or quality, and a guaranteed performance. So that, that's really a, a great feature. And their screws are interchangeable with all of the major manufacturers. Um, in, in some uh, instances, they offer the screws with the DLC coating on it. Um, so if you know you choose or you, you feel that there's a better torque value with those screws, then, then you can you can use them. Uh, there's no difference in the uh, in the fit or performance. Um, so it's they they do make them available. One key thing is, is that they offer a full, um, full range of digital dentistry solutions. Um, in addition to um, the scan bodies and, and, and scan flags, um, they provide all, all the, the, um, sorry, the, the tie bases that you may be using for a, a digital case. Um, there's many, many choices in, in their libraries. Um, they have libraries available for, for all of the major, well, we'll say all three of the major software manufacturers out there, Three Shape, ExerCAD, and Dental Wings. Um, within those libraries, there's myriad of choices to choose from. Um, like I said, this has a, a ton, literally a ton of choices with their components. Um, anything may be a little daunting um, when you are designing a case with them. So 
again, I would I would really strongly recommend you go to their website. They have a digital version of their catalog. Download that digital version or, or, or read through it. And um, there's, there's also um, tutorials that will show you how to go about choosing all the different uh, settings from the drop down menus that you will experience and, and all the different softwares. Uh, just, just so you can familiarize yourself with, with using the product and eliminate um, any confusion that, that may come. Here. So, in this particular case that we are, we're showing today, um, or we're going to be you know, getting involved with next week as well, um, we, we use multi units. And, and, and obviously, we try to suggest that the doctors use multi unit abundance on any of these all in four cases because you know, obviously you can't. You can't predict the angles that these implants are placed at. So uh, for, for our personal experience, uh, we love to get an abutment level impression to work with. Um, you know, there may be some cases where the doctor doesn't feel confident in choosing the abutments himself and, and placing them and then taking that abutment level impression. He may send the, uh, the impression, the implant level impression to you. Um, and for you to choose the, uh, the uh, poor soft tissue model and choose the abutments, um, you know, we see that as well. Um, but I would strongly suggest that the, you, you make a verification jig on top of those abutments, have the abutments return to the doctor, have them place the abutments, have them do that verification jig at abutment level and keep them in the mouth and, you know, take a new impression and work at abutment. Anytime that those abutments have to go in and out multiple times, there's always the risk of some kind of you know, fit issue um, that, that you want to try to avoid. Um, so that, uh, and again, multi-units are available in uh, different, uh, different angles and different cuff heights, um, straight 17 degree and 30 degree, which I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't have a photo of there of that particular one there, but um, most of the most of the implant um, uh, components or platforms have both uh, 17 and 30 in the angled abundance. So here's a look at their tie bases. And then I briefly mentioned before um, the, the surface texture that is apparent on their tie base. Um, the, they offer um, the angle the angle base there, which is used for um, angle screw channel cases. Um, it's a, a very um, unique component. Um, you can access it basically from a 360 degree direction. Most most angle uh, tie bases that we see or use today on the market has a side that's open, um, and you know you have to position it that way in order to get the driver in, in the correct position and that screw access. Um, desses are, are a little bit shorter, which allow the access to be done from multiple, multiple angles. So um, your, you know, your AB position, position of, of positioning a base or an abutment does not really come into play here uh, because it can be accessed from 360 degrees. They make a a special line of abutments for CEREC users out there. Um, again, available in most, um, most implant platforms. Um, and something really new uh, to, the, to their line is the elliptic base tie base. Um, the elliptic base tie base is, is meant, and it's, it's hard to tell from that picture, but it actually has a slight oval shape to it. So it's, it's really meant for tight incisor spaces. Um, you know, just picture a lower incisor implant. It's an undersized space. You're trying to squeeze in uh, some kind of an abutment or, or base in there to, to, to manufacture a crown. <clears throat> well, the elliptic base is, is more narrow. Um, so it's, it has basically a, a buckle and lingual side to it. And the mesial, so the mesial and distal sides are a little flatter. Buckle and lingual are, um, has, has the ovoid 
sideways. So it's, uh, it's really a special situation. Ace, again, very unique and innovative uh, to, to their product line. Excuse me one second. They're straight tie bases um, that we, we, do, we will be using for um, our case. Um, again, are, are the tallest, or not, not, not taller than the Sherrick, but are the tallest of the other uh, blind show. And, and you can see the surface treatment on them. Um, that, that particular surface treatment, again, is, sample, is done by desk in the factory. Um, so you don't need to, um, to do anything prior to bonding it into a restoration. Um, you know, other than your typical um, bonding, your mono bond or whatever bonding uh, solution you may be using um, in, in order to prep it for cementation, um, that will increase your bond, like I said, um, up to 200%. Um, and you can, again, you can read about that on, on Dessa's website. Um, and I, I suggest you do that as well. So as we come towards the, the end of this, um, I want to talk a little bit about the world of digital dentistry. Um, being 65 years old, okay, coming into a, a laboratory last three years that um, what was much more progressive than, than we were. We, we started to dabble in milling and uh, zirconia in, a, in, a, in our last few years. Um, my partner retired three years ago. Um, we sold the lab to, to Jay and, and his and his group. Uh, so, so I got really exposed to digital dentistry in, in a big way in, in the last three years. Um, Jay wants to do everything digital, and being old school, I fought him every every step of the way. I, I still like analog methods for some things, but digital dentistry is here to stay, no doubt. And I think it's time as technicians, we embrace it. It was, it was much, diff you know, it was a difficult thing for somebody like myself in order to do that. Um, but I, just, I have seen the light. Um, so it's, uh, it's been enlightening to me, all the different, um, all the different products that we produce here, all the different ways of doing it. Um, you know, you never stop learning as, as a technician, uh, or you, you should it anyway. Um, there's always plenty of education out there to, to advance yourself and to get better at what you do. Um, and remember the end product, you know, it's, it's, it's for the patient. You know? So why not give them uh, the best thing that we can, we can possibly offer? Um, so in, in concluding, I'd like to just read something to you. Um, the use of these two products has truly impacted the digital workflow in our lab. Anytime you can introduce a solution to a long time, long time problem with temporary restorations, have the confidence that it will provide months, if not years, of service to the patient is remarkable. And we are now in the world of digital dentistry, a much different environment than 45 years ago when I started in this business. Uh, navigating your way through digital production can be a daunting task. How we transfer our traditional restorations into their digital counterparts can be easily done with a predictable workflow. Embrace it. Why not deal with companies like Meyerson and Desk that are literally investing hundreds of thousands of dollars into research and development of these products and are there to support you every step? Usana has really been a game changer for us with its exceptional strength, slow water absorption, and beautiful aesthetics. Des has the most complete and comprehensive line of implant solutions on the market today. And as you all know, all Trusana and Des components are available from your Zahn division of Henry Shine. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today. Um, it's been a great opportunity. Um, again, I'd like to thank everyone there at Zahn for putting this together, for putting this together. Um, and I'd like to thank the people here at the laboratory um, who helped me put this presentation together. Uh, the CAD CAM department, Kyle, 
and Andrew and my um, faithful assistant here, April Striano. Um, April did all the work that made it look like I knew what I was talking about and knew what I was doing here. So I thank her for her efforts in putting this presentation together. Thanks again. Well, all of us here at Zon want to thank all of you um, for joining us today and especially Susan and Tony. Thank you so much for your time, your expertise, um, and your knowledge that you brought to the table today. We do have a couple of questions, if that's okay. Um, the first one is going out to Susan, and it is, is it okay to leave Trusana on the roller for an extended period of time? Um, absolutely, it's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, if you wanna leave it on there, leave it on there, uh, but, um, it's not necessary to have it on there all the time. And there is another one for you, Susan. It's talking about the printers. We know that the Asiga is uh, the printer of validation for Trusana, but are you looking to validate any other printers in the near future? Uh, absolutely, working on it right now. Um, I can't really talk about which ones, but just um, suffice it to say that we are currently working on um, some of the more common and more popular printers to validate for Trusona. Awesome. And Tony, we have a couple for you as well. And we also have a comment for you. The, the comment being that I can't wait to see what you bring to the table next week, Tony. So that's, I have, we have some people that are very interested in your step-by-step -step, uh, webinar next week. The first question for you is, is there a conversion chart available to decide which desk part interchanges with other brands? They, um, if you go to their website, and, I, and, and again, I, really, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, they have a lot of resources on their websites, all kinds of torque charts, <clears throat> excuse me, um, all types of uh, product lists, uh, any, anything that you could possibly think of, it's there. You know, you look around a little bit and, and you will find it. Um, is, is there a, a, an exact conversion chart? Um, they, in, in, their, in their catalog and, in, and on their website, they list their products by, by manufacturer. So they'll say, you know, Zimmer compatible components and they'll have every component that they make for a Zimmer implant every component they make for three I. Uh, so I, I guess that's the best way I can answer that question. Okay, great. And they, uh, we have another question here and they'd like to get started with DEST. What do you think they should order first to get their feet wet? Well, it, 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 it depends. I mean, if, if, you're doing, um, if you're doing screw retains or pony and crowns, I, I guess the simplest and easiest way to get involved is to order one of their tie bases for that for that crown. Um, you know, keep it simple to start. Obviously, you know, you want to, you want to start small, and then you can you know graduate into some of the larger cases. Um, but again, they it, in their in their straight tie bases, um, they offer them in a couple of cuff heights um, that is, is not always available. You know, some manufacturers do that, but not all. Um, so. You know, you have some, you have some uh, leeway there. Um, so I, that would be the simplest way. And as, as you, as you get more experience with it, um, you know, then you, then you can move on to some bigger cases. I mean, it's, it's, it's not difficult if you're familiar with, with, um, you know, the implant processes, the digital processes of implant dentistry. Um, it's, it's not. It's not that much different. It's, it's, it's just choosing different components, that's all.